the sun. Mm, the wait, the wait is over. Ladies and gentlemen, the wait is over. It's God's time. The wait is over. It's your time. The wait, the wait, the wait, the W-A-I-T, the wait is over. It's your time. The wait is over. It's your time. The wait is over. The wait is over. Your mourning is over. Your sickness is over. It's God's time. It's your time. The wait is over. The wait is over. The wait is over. It's over. It's over. The wait is over. The wait is over. Welcome to the Back to Basics online church. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I feel good, good, good. I feel good deep down in my soul. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good deep down in my soul. There's something about talking with Jesus makes me feel good. Something about serving the Lord makes me feel good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody, everybody ought to praise him. The weight is over. You say, well, Pastor Carter, what you talking about? The wait is over. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. That's the truth. That's the word of God. God will honor his word. Many of you are waiting. You're waiting on the Lord. You're waiting on the Lord. Many of you are waiting on the Lord. But God hears you. God hears you. God hears you. And so we praise God. We praise God. We praise God. Just want to make sure that we have the audio set up. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We bless God. The wait is over, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. The wait is over. Praise God. God wants you to know that they that wait upon him shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Praise God. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We praise you, Lord, for who you are. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Praise God. We give a shout out to all of our friends, Andy Mack in Milford, Connecticut. We give a shout out to Linda Barrett in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, Wes, how's everything in Chester, Pennsylvania? We give a shout out to Bishop Elijah in Mombasa, Kenya. We give a shout out to all of our friends in Nairobi, in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. We give a shout out to all of our Back to Basics uh, students who were graduated yesterday in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. We graduated a lot of people in Dar es Salaam yesterday and, uh, and ordained many, many new pastors. And we thank Pastor Bill Abraham for the mighty work he's doing there. We give praise to God. We give praise to God. We're live streaming today uh, via YouTube. We're live streaming also via Facebook. And we hope you can pick this up. 
This is uh, Pastor Leroy Carter. We're with the Back to Basics Ministries here in Lithonia, Georgia. And this is a worldwide ministry where we're reaching the world for Jesus. Well, praise God. We pray that God continues to bless you. We want you to wait on the Lord. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. I called a couple people yesterday on the telephone, people I hadn't heard from in a long time. Two of them were pastors. You know, when I don't hear from you for a long time, I think something's wrong. I called a friend here in Georgia, hadn't heard from her in a long time, and see how she and her family are doing. God does not want you to give up. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants Christians who are going to endure in good times, in bad times. He wants us to trust in him. Whether you're feeling good or whether you're not feeling good, whether the money's coming in or whether the money's not coming in, we serve a living God. God wants us to make up our minds, just make up our mind, your mind, get a determined mind that you're going to trust God no matter what. If if your mother or father deserts you, if if your children kick you to the curb, if your wife leaves you, if your husband leaves you, you stay with Jesus. God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. When, when people uh, laugh at you or ridicule you, you trust in Jesus. Don't fight them. Don't fight back. Don't wish them evil, but pray for them. Pray that God will bless them and that God will give them the love for Jesus that you have. And don't let anybody or anything, ladies and gentlemen, rob you of your love for Jesus Christ. Jesus Sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You're brighter than the morning star, fairer, much fairer than the lilies that bloom by the wayside, purer, much purer than gold. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly while the uh, 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 weary waters roll, while the tempest still is nigh. Hide me, O thou great Jehovah, till the storm of life is past. Uh, and we ask God, guide us safely into your harbor. Lord, receive my soul at last. It's all about Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. It is not about you. It is not about money. It is not about the president. It's not about the prime minister. It's not about the government. It is not about politics. It is not about your job. It's not about kissing up the people. It is not about pleasing people. It's about pleasing the living God. Ladies and gentlemen, the sooner we get this in our spirit and lock it into our hearts and start living it, living it the more peaceful our lives will be. I wrote a young man this week. He said he's having trouble sleeping. I said, you need to turn to the scriptures. Stop uh, Stop dwelling on what you're dwelling on and turn to the scriptures. I said, read the Psalms. Read Psalm 91. My next step is going to uh, tell it to turn your life over to Jesus. You know, there's peace in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. I see so many people running around running from church to church, running from meeting to meeting. I see so many people every time the church doors are open, you just got to be there. When are you going to take some time out and learn how to fellowship with the Lord, commune with the Lord? And, 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 and you know, it's going to be a sad day, ladies and gentlemen, when, when Jesus cracks through the sky and he calls the church home, and a lot of people are going to be are going to be left behind, and there's going to be pulling of hair and gnashing of teeth and wailing and crying and begging, and people are going to say, "But Jesus, I served you. I was there every time the church doors opened. I was there every time they asked for an offering. I gave. Every time they asked for people to do this, I was there. I didn't miss a Sunday. I was there three times a Sunday every Sunday." And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. But God, I read the Bible cover to cover three times a year. I read the scripture. I memorized scripture. Depart from me. I never knew you. But God, I made videos. I, 
I, I sold CDs. I, I, I wrote books. I told people uh, about, I, I ministered in the choir. I formed mass choirs, sold millions of CDs. Depart from me. I never knew you. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says, what does it, it profit a man or a woman if they gain the whole world and lose their own soul? What is a person profited? What good is it, ladies and gentlemen, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? You don't want to lose your soul. No, no, hey, you don't want to lose your soul. To lose your soul means to be eternally separated from God. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the worst thing that can happen to anybody, and that is to be eternally separated from God. God did not make you to go to hell. God did not make you to be uh, cast into the lake of fire. The scripture says in Psalm 139, 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made so that I may praise him. That's our purpose. That is our reason for being. That's our purpose. Not to accumulate money, not to get all uh, the, the praise and accolades from all kinds of people, not to be a pro football player or pro basketball player or, or to have a harem of women or to set up a, a kingdom of, 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 of economic empires. No, your purpose and mine it is the same. My purpose is to worship God. Your purpose is to worship God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you see around us today hate, hatred, people hating on one another. Even in the church, they're disagreeing. They're hating on one another. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this should not be. God is not the author of confusion. Where there's hatred is, there is Satan. Where there's bitterness, there is Satan. If hatred is in your heart, Satan's in your heart. You've got to get him out of your heart. There's only one way to come to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again, born by the Spirit of the living God. The Holy Ghost will give you the new birth if you will repent of your sins, turn from your wicked ways, Turn from what you're doing. Put Jesus first in your life. Worship God. Honor God. That is the reason why he made you and me. You and I don't have time to hate one another. Ladies and gentlemen, I say to your haters out there, you don't have time to hate anybody. Well, Pastor Carter, you don't know what they did to me. No, I don't know what they did to you, but you don't have time to hate anybody. You don't have time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's getting late in the evening. Jesus is about to crack the sky. He's about to crack the sky. And so we don't have time to hate anybody. We don't have time to hate anybody. Praise God. We don't have time to hate anybody. Jesus is coming back again soon. So get your life in order. The purpose of the Worship Where I Am Church, the Back to Basics online church, is to help you to get your life in order. We present Jesus Christ. We don't try to tell you what to do. We teach what the Word says. And we believe that as we continue to labor on a weekly basis, presenting the Word of God, God is going to reward this effort. God is going to reward this work. He's not unrighteous to forget our work and labor of love. And as you continue to witness, witness to the haters. Love those that hate you. Love those who despitefully use you. Pray for those who, who use you and abuse you. Pray for them. Do what Jesus would do. Pray for them and love them. Show them love. Love conquers a multitude of sins. Love shuts down the hatred. And so, ladies and gentlemen, give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. Give the world Jesus. We're going to look again at Acts chapter 3. Man, that message last week was awesome. And it's been ringing in my spirit all week long. 
So we're going to go back to Acts chapter 3, and we're going to look at Peter and John at the temple. Ladies and gentlemen, you say, well, I don't have anything to give to God. I don't have anything, any gifts or anything. Ladies and gentlemen, you can give the love of Jesus Christ to others. You can give the love of Jesus Christ to others. And we're going to show you an example of two poor men, two poor men. They were poor. They were dirt poor. But what they had to give, they gave. And because they gave what they had, 5,000 people got saved. Come on, somebody. You mean to tell me, Pastor Carter, they didn't have any money? They didn't have a mega ministry? They didn't have a TV ministry? They did not have a worldwide outreach? And 5,000 people got saved? Yes, only on this one occasion. We're not talking about the many thousands who got saved on other occasions because these poor men trusted God on this occasion. As we look into Acts chapter 3, and our subject today is, I give you Jesus, part 2. I give you Jesus, part 2. We're going to look at Peter and John at the temple when they went to the temple to pray, and they ha had an encounter with a man. And what they did with that man caused 5,000 people to be saved. 5,000 people to be saved. Praise God. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you for this new day. I thank you for the people tuned in to this broadcast. I thank you for the world. Thank you for the nation. Thank you for the president of our nation. Thank you for our leaders. Lord God, I thank you for them. I know you're going to work things out to the praise of your glory. I bless you, Lord God. I thank you for what you're doing in Tanzania, in Kenya, in Russia, in North Korea, in China, in Israel, in the United States, in every nation. We bless you. Thank you for what you're doing in Venezuela. We thank you for what you're doing in, in Colombia. We thank you, Father. You are God. You're God of the whole universe. You're the God of all creation. Lord, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. We just trust you, Lord God. We bless you. We thank you. We honor you. We love you. There's none like you, Lord God. We have our minds made up. We're going to stick with you. Lord God, we ask that you bless those who are on live with us today, those who are receiving this ministry through live, via live streaming, and those who will watch the video. We pray, God, that the anointing will be upon this word and that you will touch the hearts of people. Let them know, God, that they are important to you. Let them know that you have a plan for their life. Let them know that though many might be messed up, that you can fix up what Satan messed up. Lord God, you're able. I know you're able because you did it for me. And now, Lord, open up all uh, the, the eyes of our understanding, the ears of our heart. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Holy Ghost, don't let the word of God go out and come back empty, but let the word of God perform what God has ordered it to do. We pray for souls to be saved. God, we extend uh, your hand, God, and ask that you heal the sick, deliver the bound, and we praise you, Father. And Lord, bless this ministry. Bless this ministry that we may keep on keeping on serving you and blessing you with all our hearts. And we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for the many of you who are supporting this ministry, your prayers, your gifts and your love. And we thank God that the word of God is dwelling mighty, mightily and richly in your heart. Praise God. Let's take a look, ladies and gentlemen. As we look into our message today, we're looking at I give you Jesus part two. We gave you Jesus part one last week. If you missed that, you can pick that up on www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. All of our messages are archived on that website, www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. Com, or you could call me, email me, uh, get in touch with me, and I will send you um, the messages. We thank God. Praise God. Let's look at the scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the scriptures. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, which was three o'clock p.m. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. Let's stop here. When the, the lame man saw Peter and John going into the temple, they, they, he stopped them and asked for an offering. He was begging. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Just like when you come out of the convenience store with your cup of coffee and you see a, a sad looking sister or a sad looking brother, uh, 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 Mr. Can you spare a dollar? Uh, can you lend me a dollar? Uh, I mean, they're all over. They're all over. And sometimes if I have it to give, I give it to them. But there are beggars everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. There are beggars everywhere. But Peter and John, listen to this. Verse 6. We're in Acts chapter 3. Then Peter says, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Ladies and gentlemen, what a day, what a day, what a mighty God we serve. God does miracles. God performs signs and wonders. God has not lost his power, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, uh, the church has lost its power because the church does not believe God the way it ought to. But God still performs miracles, signs, and wonders, and healings. And the scripture is so true. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are turned to, to him. God is looking for you today. God is looking for someone to heal today. God is looking for someone who will believe the scripture. Believe the scripture, ladies and gentlemen, and you shall be healed. What must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your household. Oh, if men and women would only believe the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get back to that old time religion. As my friend Andy Mack says, get back to that old time religion and believe God. Believe the word of God. Believe what God says. And when we get back, when we repent for having gone astray from God, when we repent from having gone astray from his word, when we repent for having done our own thing in disobedience to God, when we repent and humble ourselves and turn to God, we will see signs and wonders and miracles, healings. God will flood you, overwhelm you. Blessings will overtake you. Blessings are searching for you now to overtake you. God is looking for a people who will humble themselves and, 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 and trust him. The scripture says, if my people, listen to this church, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. That's a promise from God. That's a promise to the people of God. God is waiting on you and me to stop our sinful ways. Stop walking in pride. Stop trying to do things on our own and return to the Lord and put our trust in God. So we have Peter and John going up to the temple at the ninth hour, which was three o'clock p.m., to pray. And these brothers, they were broke. They were broke. They were broke, busted, and disgusted. They didn't have any money. Economically, they were poor. Oh, you know, they were fishermen, but the, they were broke. Peter wouldn't lie. He said, silver and gold would have I none. And then here's this 
crippled man who had been crippled from birth. And there are many people who have been crippled from birth. Satan may have crippled you even while you were in your mother's womb. That's why a lot of people act the way they do today. They were crippled in their mother's womb. They were attacked by Satan. They were they were attacked by Satan in the womb. And, and, and many people come out of the womb bruised. And so here's this man. He could not walk. He had to be carried daily to a place where he could beg for money. And he saw Peter and John walking into the temple. And Peter and John, the Bible says uh, uh, they were going there to pray. They didn't have any money, but they were going there to pray. You know, God honors you when you pray. God honors you when you take time out to seek the Lord. God honors you when you take time out daily, daily, ladies and gentlemen. On our logo, we have a, 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 a photograph by Jesus daily and his Uncle Sam on his knees with his hands lifted up praying unto Jesus. And we see the blood of Jesus dripping down his body. Uncle Sam representing the United States on their knees before Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, can you imagine what is going to happen when this nation humbles ourselves before God and falls on our knees and calls upon the name of the Lord? We thank Jesus daily for this piece of artwork, which is so descriptive, so diagram diagrammatic. We thank God. And can you imagine what is going to happen in your household when husband gets on his knees and prays unto Jesus, when wife humbles herself and gets on her knees and calls on Jesus, when children call upon the name of the Lord? Can you imagine what will happen in nations when nations humble themselves and call upon the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No, calling upon Allah is not going to save the world. Allah is not God. God is the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can call on Allah as long as you can, as long as there's breath in your body. You will not get an answer. But when you call on God in the name of Jesus, you'll get results. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's for whoever uh, needs to hear that word. When you uh, get away from that false religion, when you stop chanting unto Buddha, when you stop uh, chanting unto your Hindu gods, when you stop chanting and praying unto your household idols, when you stop praying and, and when you stop praying to your job or or kissing up to your boss, but when you humble yourselves and fall on your knees before Jesus Christ, who is the, the mediator between God and man. Jesus said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Ladies and gentlemen, hearken to the voice of this preacher. Uh, so many people are hating the preacher, but we must keep on preaching we must keep on preaching. You can hate us, but the more you hate us, the more we're going to love you. The more you hate us, the more we're going on Nebone Station because God has called us to uh, show men the way to salvation. And the way is by the cross through Jesus Christ. The scripture says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I pray that this gospel is plain enough for you to understand. There should not be anything deep or difficult about it. The gospel should be presented plainly so that a child can understand. Even a child can understand that Jesus said you must be born again. You must be born again. Even a child can get the new birth by asking Jesus for the new birth. So you are, you grown up, stop being so stubborn. You politicians, stop being so stubborn. You leaders, stop being so stubborn. And you church folks, stop being so stubborn. You can go to church all your life, three times a Sunday, seven days a week, and you can still go to hell if you don't know Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never 
knew you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that Jesus knows you and make sure that you know him. So back to this temple scene. Peter and John, they were broke. They had no money. The man said, give, a, give me some money. Help me. Hey, brother, uh, can I borrow a dollar? Uh, can you help me with a sandwich? Can you help me with some French fries? Can you buy me a cup of coffee? And Peter and, and John stopped. And Peter looked on the man. And Peter said, fix your eyes on us. Look at us. And the man looked at, at Peter. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Man, I don't have any money. But such as I have, give I unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, it was the such as I have that made the difference in this man's life and eventually will make the difference within 24 hours of a whole lot of other people's lives. The Bible says 5,000 people's lives were changed because of the way Peter and John responded to this beggar. Can you imagine what God can do by the way you respond to a beggar? Can you imagine what God can do uh, by the way you respond to an appeal from a ministry that needs funds? You need to have a ministry that you support. Support the Lord's work. Give. Give and it shall be given unto you. In good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Some of you don't give to any church. You give it to God as unto God. You give it to God and you designate it to a church or to a ministry so that God can use it. Some of you are not going to grow spiritual, spiritually until you start giving. Some of you are not going to get your healing until you start giving. You need to open that fist and let, let it flow. The Bible says, he that believeth in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Open the fist first. Take that tight fist and open it up and give to somebody. And as you open your fist and give, watch how the living water begins to flow out of your belly. Watch how the healing comes. Watch how the well-being comes. Watch how the peace comes upon you. Watch how you start sleeping at night when you give to someone else. And giving does not always mean money. Peter and John teach us. They let us know. Silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give unto you. And then Peter told him, take up your bed and walk. This is the gift that Peter and John gave to the man, take up your bed and walk. These men were under the power of the Holy Ghost. They had walked with Jesus Christ. They had waited in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost lived inside of them. Ladies and gentlemen, every born again believer has the Holy Spirit inside of you. Every born again believer has the keys to the kingdom. Jesus said, Behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose, loosed in heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Every one of us is an ambassador for Jesus Christ. We represent the kingdom. We represent Jesus. Every believer if you have been born again by the Spirit of God, you have the Spirit of God living in you. God lives in you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit live inside of every believer. And you have power, ladies and gentlemen. You have dunamis. The Bible says it's called dunamis, translated into the English as power. Jesus has given us authority, the exousia, to use the power, the dunamis, that he has placed in us, that we can go to the sick and we can lay hands on them in Jesus' name and the sick shall recover. The Bible says that. The reason why a lot of people stay sick, because hardly anyone wants to believe Jesus and do what Jesus says do. Jesus said, you shall lay hands on the sick in my name. In my name, 
you shall lay hands on the sick and 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 they shall recover you said in jesus said in my name you shall cast out demons jesus said in my name you shall take up serpents and they will not harm you believe god ladies and gentlemen a lot of people are sick today because few believers want to trust god at his word and be obedient to god we would rather go to the the the, the chicken dinner we would rather go to the fashion show we would rather support the pastor's aid we'd rather go to the concert we would go rather go to the church's night out at the movies than to lay hands on the sick some of us have people even in our households they might be dying they might be sick and nobody's laying hands on them and you say i'm i'm saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost come on somebody come on somebody if you're saved sanctified filled with the holy ghost then exercise the exousia that god has given you do what the lord says do learn how to give ladies and gentlemen god puts situations in your life so you can learn how to give peter and john didn't ask for that beggar to pop up in their lives they've got probably were tired of seeing beggars i get tired of seeing beggars i get tired of every time i come out of the convenience store or out of the gas station purchasing my gasoline uh, for my car to go fill up my tank i get tired of seeing people begging but god might put those beggars in your life to see what you're going to give them what you're going to do how you respond peter and john responded and five thousand people got saved can you imagine how many people would get saved if you would just respond in the situation God has placed you in? Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Christian is more than just sitting up in church hearing a message every Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Christian is more than writing uh, uh, the, the name Christian uh, uh, next to your name on an application. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Christian is more than just fellowshipping with a group of people who are like-minded. Ladies and gentlemen, being a Christian it means that Christ lives in you. And, and you respond to situations the way Christ would respond. Being a Christian means you trust the power of the Holy Ghost who lives in you to help you to respond to every situation. Being a Christian means that when sickness comes upon you, you learn how to respond in holiness, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Being a Christian means that you do not go where others go. You do not do what they do. You do not say what they say. Being a Christian means you, you've been set aside. You've been set apart. That's the word sanctified. Being a Christian means you are different and you know that you're different. Being a Christian means you do, do not use profanity. You do not sleep with your neighbor's wife. You do not sleep with your neighbor's husband. You do not sleep with your neighbor's son or daughter. You do not molest little children. Being a Christian means that you walk the walk that you talk. Being a Christian means you study this scripture from cover to cover and you believe every word of God. Being a Christian means you apply this word to your life. Being a Christian means you do not just get lazy, sit back and get fat watching television. Being a Christian means you are, you call on the name of the Lord. Being a Christian means you set aside quality time every day to talk to the Lord, to learn of him. Being a Christian means you are study to show yourself approved unto God. And being a Christian means you respond to the situations that God puts in your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Being a Christian means you ask God, you seek him, you knock on the door, and he shows you how to respond to every situation. If every believer responded the way God wants us to do to every situation, this will be a wonderful world. Ladies and gentlemen, billions of people will get saved today if Christians responded the way God wants us to to the situations. Instead, what do we do? We grumble and we complain. We get on Facebook. We get a friend who writes something negative on Facebook and we, we amen it or we like it or we put a thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, don't agree with all the mess that's on Facebook or on YouTube or on the social media. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care if it's your mother writing stuff on Facebook. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If your mother's putting illicit stuff or wrong stuff on Facebook, you ought to shut her down. You ought to defriend her. Defriend her. And don't don't go don't agree with the madness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are believers. We're Christians. People ought to see Christ in us. We ought not to be on Facebook every day complaining and every 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 time you post something on Facebook, it's a grumble, it's grumbling, it's complaining, it's hating, it's hating on the president. Some of y'all need to stop hating on the president. And I'm talking to a lot of my African-American friends. You need to stop hating on the president. Uh, some of you didn't even go out to vote anyhow. You didn't vote anyhow. And, 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 and some of you uh, 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 hate this man. Well, he's God's elected. He's God's anointed. God worked through the vote and let us know he's God's anointed. Now you need to get on board and start praying for this man and start supporting what he's doing. You ought to get on board and take a stand and, and shut your friends down who are uh, promoting all this hate. Uh, uh, you can't bring Obama back. He served his two terms. Obama's the one who sold this nation out to Islam. Wake up, people. Wake up, Christians, and smell the coffee. Obama is the one who sold America out to Islam. Come on, somebody. We need to put Christ back in this nation. So support the president. We know he's rough edged and, and he, he's ignorant, and he's got some ways about him that we don't like, but he's God's anointed. And, 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 and don't grieve the Spirit of God by denouncing the president or uh, like this stupid, idiotic uh, legislator, I think in the state of Missouri, who called for his assassination. Now that chick ought to be sit, sat down. She ought to be sat down. She ought to go to jail. The FBI ought to arrest her today for calling for the assassination of the president. Ladies and gentlemen, Christians don't call for the assassination of anybody. Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Hey, I don't, look, this is not an editorial. This is preaching, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the, the Bible says, they shall know that we are Christians by our love. Now, how many of you are showing love through the stuff you put on Facebook? Come on, come on now. You can do better than this. If you don't have anything to say, shut up. Don't say a thing, shut up. If you don't have a kind word to say, then, then go on to the next post. Read the next post. But you need to pray before you put stuff on the social media. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but I don't care if you don't like it. I'm a preacher. I preach the word of God. The, the Bible says they shall know that we are Christians by our love. Peter and John said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto you. And you can say the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you read Facebook and you see all that madness, the nastiness, the bitterness, the hatred on Facebook, before you respond or agree with the people who put those posts up, even if they are your friends, you need to pray. Let some sweetness come out of you. Or if sweetness can't flow, then don't respond. And if you get tired of that, defriend those people. You don't have to read that. You don't have to feed your spirit with that madness, with that hatred. Ladies and gentlemen, we are to walk in love. Spend less time on, 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 on the, the Internet and more time in the presence of the Lord. Spend more time praying to God. Spend more time reading the word and, and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you. Ladies and gentlemen, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Pastor, start teaching your people how to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Pastor, get filled with the Holy Ghost yourself. You need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You bishops, you denominational leaders, you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get filled. Stop, stop being proud spirits. Humble yourself. You know you don't have the Holy Ghost. You need to get the Holy Ghost. Some of you need to get saved. Some of you bishops need to get saved. Some of you preachers need to get saved. And when you get saved, then you ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and walk humbly before God. The Bible says, what, uh, what does the Lord require of the old man? But to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly 
before God. What does the God require of you, O oh man, but to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly before God. That's what God requires us to do. He made us to commune with him, to fellowship with him. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 1 through 4. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. How be it, listen, how be it, even though Peter and John were arrested for preaching Christ Jesus, how be it, many of them which heard the word believed and the number of the men was about 5,000. Ladies and gentlemen, 5,000 men got saved because Peter and John took the time to speak to one beggar. Oh, awesome. Holy Ghost, you are so awesome. Peter and John took the time to respond to one beggar. So many of us, we walk past the beggars, we walk past the poor, we look down on them. We even, even walk past the beggars in our church. We don't obey God even in church. We walk past the, the hurting, the poor, the sick, the afflicted. We don't visit the hospitals, uh, ladies and gentlemen, yet we call ourselves Christians. But Peter and John took the time out and they stopped. And Peter said to the man, look on us. Silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give to you. Rise, take up your bed and walk. And Peter stretched out his hand and took the man by the wrist and snatched him to his feet. The Bible says the man leaped up. He stood, he walked, and he entered into the temple with them, leaping and, and praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to see more people leaping and jumping and praising God. That's the way you ought to come into church. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I get tired of going to church and seeing dead folks come in. I mean, like it's a it's a funeral. Uh, ushers looking dead. People looking dead. Choir looking dead. Ladies and gentlemen, my Bible tells me make a joyful noise. Come on, somebody. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Ladies and gentlemen, I want, I want to see some joy in the house. I want to see some praise in the house. We want to give God some glory in the house. We give God glory in this house. Hallelujah. At the Back to Basics online church, we give God the praise. Oh, I feel like giving God some glory. I feel like giving God some praise. Hallelujah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, oh, you might snuff out your light. You might turn out your light. But this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave me a little light. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Peter and John let their light shine. And even though they got locked up, they got put into prison for preaching the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, 5,000 men. <clears throat> That does not count the many women and children. You know, 5,000 men get saved. Their wives and children are going to get saved too. Thousands got saved because two disciples took the time out to look upon a poor man as they were going into the temple. How many people do you think will get saved if you would stop and look on a poor person and give them what God has given to you? And, and, and minister the gospel to them, release the Holy Ghost upon them, release the power of salvation upon them through the preaching of the gospel. You can tell them, silver and gold, I don't have any. No, no tango dinero, I don't have any cash. But what I have, I give to you. I give you Jesus. Tell them your testimony. I give you Jesus. Show them the way to get saved. Show them how to get saved. Lead them through the sinner's prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the best gift you can give anybody. The best gift that you can give anybody is to lead them to Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, that person you lead to Christ may be 
the next, next super evangelist who will go throughout the world and proclaim and do the works like Billy Graham and Reinhold Bunke and, and, and so many others have done. Uh, they might be the one God will raise up to send into Kenya, into North Korea. Uh, uh, might be the one God's going to send to North Korea and get uh, 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 that president saved, that premier saved. He might be the one going into Israel, get Israel saved. Ladies and gentlemen, take time out. Let people know, I don't have any money. But what I have, let me give you it, it to you. I give you Jesus. Then give them Jesus. I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I give you Jesus, my friend. I give you Jesus, silver and gold. I have none. No tango dinero. I ain't got no money. But I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I give you Jesus. He's my friend. I give you Jesus. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Online Church. I pray that you are saved, and if you're not saved, you can be saved today. I give you Jesus. You can be saved by confessing your sins today. Tell God, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm ashamed and I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins. And then tell the Lord, Father God, I ask Jesus Christ to come into my life and be my Savior, my Lord. Tell God that you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and ask God for the new birth, for salvation. And you watch what God will do. I give you Jesus. He's the peace that passes all understanding. I give you Jesus, my friend, I give you Jesus. Till next time, you have a blessed day. You stay in your word. Don't let anybody steal your crown. Tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Hey, have a wonderful, a wonderful, and a mighty, mighty, mighty day. Praise God. Those who choose, you can stay online and we'll chat a little bit. We're just going to stop recording.